the alarm. In 1981, these four longtime friends blasted out of their hometown in Wales onto the international music scene. Ten years later, without warning, lead singer Mike Peters abandoned the band on stage. This is my last moment with the alarm. Leaving his bandmates in shock. Did he say what I think he said? Hey, what the hell's going on? I became public enemy number one. Hi, I'm Amir Halim, and this is Bands Reunited, and we are in London. Can we turn back the rock and roll clock? Nigel. And bring back the original members of The Alarm? Eddie? For one final concert? Mike Peter? Where's my lawyer? I'd love to say yes. Yes? Unfortunately, no. I've never really got over the shock of it yet. The alarm's meteoric rise to stardom began when four childhood buddies followed their rock and roll dream. Their original guitar-driven anthem shook the music world. With six albums and some of rock and roll's most hardcore fans, the alarm kept ringing loudly with... And their signature... Until the fateful day, Mike Peters decided to quit on stage. I'm going out in the place of glory. Without warning, his bandmates. This is it. This is the last gig. He'd left the group and everything the group was stood for. I did what I had to do and they did what they had to do. After Mike's sudden departure, the remaining members went their separate ways. I just thought, you absolute ungrateful bastard. It's been over a decade since lead singer Mike Peters, guitarist singer Dave Sharp, bassist Eddie McDonald, and drummer Nigel Twist have been in the same room together. Will we be able to convince these four childhood friends to forgive and forget and give their fans one last blaze of glory? We're here in San Francisco on our way to the public defender's office where drummer Nigel Twist works to try to convince him to reunite with his former band. He's the first hurdle on the race to get the alarm to sound again. Uh, easy access. Walk right in the front door, open the doors, and elevator over to the left. So you go in this, go up second floor. What was that zigzag floor? That's where we were on. There is a desk yeah. and a little gate, half gate. We hope it doesn't have a buzzer on it. Right. Oh, you can't come in. Hey, move it. Nigel? Nigel? Where is he? Nigel? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you. It's good to meet you. Good to meet you. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> say, hi. say hi, everybody. Nigel, mm -hmm. there's a band that you may be familiar with, mm -hmm. The Alarm. Have you heard of them? Maybe. Yeah? What I've been assigned to do is reunite mm -hmm. the alarm for a very special reunion, a one-night-only performance. Oh. I was wondering if you would participate. In, sure. In this You're in? Yeah. He's in! Hey. Welcome aboard. Right. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Uh, to help uh, seal the deal, if you will, uh, I just need your autograph. The twist is back, ladies and gentlemen. A big hand for the twist. Yay, that's awesome. Now, I was wondering, um, do you have some time? I'd love to chat with you as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah? How does one go from being the, the drummer of a, a successful band to being an investigator for the public defender's office? How does that happen? That's a real segue, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, uh, let's see. I didn't want to be one of those guys, you know, with the band splits. And then you see the guy uh, playing in some bar somewhere, you know, and people say, hey, it's not the dude from the alarm, you know. I moved to San Francisco. I had this roommate. He had another friend who was a public defender. I found it really interesting. And he said, do you want to try an internship at my office? And I said, well, sure, I'll give it a go. Tell me about the image. The image that you guys developed was, was, was interesting. The military outfits, the, the hair that was sky high. How did that come about for you guys? 
it's just one of those things, you know, it's just like you, you pick up this one thing and say, that's different, let's do it, you know. We started wearing cowboy boots and then it moved to you know, vests with uh, the conches and then the pants with the conches and then the hats and, right. you know, bolos and it just got crazy. As you were experiencing the success, did you think that it was also affecting the band in a negative way? Did you see egos getting out of control or people maybe becoming well, hard to live with? Well, of course it does. You know, it's like any relationship. You know, it's, it's been a long marriage. You know, by that time, we've all been together for 10 years. <laughs> it's, it's hard to live together. How did you deal with it? How did you guys adjust or...? You know, to be quite honest, we didn't really. Right. Uh, we just sort of go off on solo call, just like not address the situation, you know, like you have to do in a relationship. Basically, we just stopped talking. What were some of the main issues or problems you wish you could have addressed or you should have addressed? Um, we had a big problem with uh, writing. Oh, the writing credits were always, you know, Peter's McDonald. So we came to an agreement early on that what we do is split the writing credits like 40-40, uh, 10-10. So at least the, the publishing, you know, we'd, at least we'd get some cash. And that started to create rifts because, you know, once the wise came in and started saying, wait a minute, you know, well, you know, my gripes, most of the songs, you know, why should, why should you get some of this, you know, and that sort of thing. We talked about the gig in 91 at the Brixton Academy mm -hmm. when Mike made that announcement. Take me through that experience and what happened. Now, by that time, we'd just finished a European tour and we were really spent physically, emotionally, you know, it was, uh, there was a lot of stuff going on within the band. We knew that we weren't talking, there was a lack of communication, you know, and it was breaking down. We knew that if we didn't address it, you know, something would happen sometime, but we didn't know when. And it's obvious that Mike took this time to decide, okay, well, I'm going to make it now. Then he announced it to the audience before the last song. Tonight, this is my last moment with my alarm. I'm going out in a blaze of glory. At that time, we didn't know. So I was looking around the rest of the guys saying, hey, what the hell's going on, you know? And they were looking at me, I don't know, you know? It sort of sank in really quickly, and I thought, well, I'm not going to allow this to be sort of some great moment for him. So we played the last song, and as if nothing had happened. And then he sort of won that off stage, and that was the end of the band. And then afterwards, just had to all go back to the dressing room and deal with it. And what happened there? It's just disbelief, you know, everybody's sort of sitting around going, well, what are we going to do now? <laughs> What's going he, on? Did, I heard he just got in a car and left, right? Yeah. He was gone, so it was just the three of you just to figure out what had happened yeah. on stage. Yeah, and when you're in that relationship for that long a period of time, then I think you should have some sort of uh, consideration for the people you're with. Yeah. Why do you think he didn't tell you guys first? I think it's misguided fear. How so? I, I don't think he... I mean, had the backbone to do it mm. at that time. I don't think he, you know, felt he could do it. In my search to, to get this band back together again, I'm going to need some help from you. So if you could just give me an idea of where I could find Eddie. Eddie is uh, now a photographer, and he lives somewhere in the south, and I don't know where. OK. He's the most elusive. South of? South yeah, London. England. Uh, London. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Drummer Nigel Twist is in and told us we can find bassist Eddie McDonald in South London. Next, can we sneak past this lady? Oh, oh, and get the thumbs up from Eddie? I'd love to say yes. Yes. Unfortunately, no. Will Dave put down the pipe and pick up his axe? Yeah, I've been trying to do that for years. Well, You've got no chance. And later, old wounds are slow to heal. You lot four, four of us in a room. You absolutely ungrateful bastard. And and there's got to be some sparks flying, but I can yeah. tell you that for nothing. Our quest to reunite the alarm leads us to London, England, where bass player Eddie McDonald now works as a professional photographer. The plan is to ambush one of his photo shoots. But how will we get past the front desk? Martin's going in, saying he's go, gonna. Well, yeah, this second door. I'm gonna go. Come on, guys. Go, 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 go. Nothing stops us. Eddie McDonald is inside. We're just waiting on word that he is responding to our courier. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, uh, if we could just go no, in the front. No, I'm sorry. Just doing no, I'm sorry. You're okay. not coming in. Oh, no, Annette, call security. Annette, call security. 
security. Oh, we just hi. It's all it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good, everybody. Hi, I'm from the H1. Sorry, sorry for the. Uh... No, you don't just come in here. No, 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 sorry, sorry, and sorry. ride roughshod over me like sorry, that, sorry. you bastard. Sorry, sorry about that. We didn't mean to do that. Uh, I'm from VH1. I've come all the way from America. I'm looking for Eddie McDonald. I just wanted to chat with him if I could for a moment. Now I don't know him personally. I oh. just happen to know he's in the prem on the premises. Oh, okay. So I'm not going to let you it's in. Well, I'm not going to let you in unless I've had a word with him first. Okay. 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 If you sure. Now, if I go through that door, you're not going to suddenly. No, 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 me. no, no, no. Right. Okay. Two seconds. Two seconds. Let's go. This <laughs> is comedy. It's comedy. Hi, Eddie. Hi, my name is Honor from VH1. Hello. I'm right in the middle of a job at the moment. Oh, you are? Yeah, oh, I'm in the middle of the shoot. Okay. Uh, it's uh, very kind. Thank yeah, you very much indeed. Yeah, no, no. What, what, Thank you. what I'm wondering is if I could ask you a quick question right now okay. and then talk to you after, so after your yeah, shoot. Okay. Uh, I'm on a mission to find uh, members of the Alarm. Oh, right. Yeah. To ask them uh, if they would uh, love to participate in a, uh, in a reunion. To get together, hang out, have fun, chit chat, and allow us to sort of chronicle the event. Would you like to to take part in a reunion? Um, I'd love to say yes. Yes. Unfortunately, no. Oh, really? Why? Because I've got a new job now. I've oh. moved on. What I'm what I'm talking about is like a one-off uh, get together with your with your old bandmates, and then if you guys are up for it, how, how, how much money is involved? Where's the suitcase? Get the suitcase. <laughs> To be a culture, I'd love to. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Right, yeah. Well, so you're in? Of course. Oh, he's in! He's in! Brilliant, brilliant. Oh, okay, so could we talk to you after you're done with your, your shoot? See you in a little bit. We'll wait for you here. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Amir. Hi, What's, your name? What's your name? What's your name? I'm Gwen. Hi, Gwen. Nice to meet you. This is Martin. He played the part of the, the ruffian. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. And yeah, needless to say, uh, this wasn't a typical day for you, was it? Uh, you could up. say that, yeah. yeah. Master of understatement, as you are. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. Tell me about uh, what you're doing these days. As soon as I finished with the band, I actually went back to college and um, started taking photographs. I'm basically a photographer nowadays, so oh, okay. um, I've been doing that for about eight years. Now. The, do you think that the alarm achieved all it could achieve with the potential you had in terms of the talent and the, and the makeup of the band? Good question. Very good question. Because when we finished, we finished on a real high, a great gig. And that was the one thing, looking back on everything we achieved, is the fact that we finished like that, even if it wasn't, as Mike will probably tell you, in quite unusual circumstances. Uh, for him to sort of tell the public before you, or at the same time as you finding out that the band was over, wasn't that... He'd left the group, and everything the group was stood for, because he wanted to do something else. But it was sad, because the next day, it was like... Right, well, you know... What do you do? I thought, do we keep the alarm going? And I tried for a little bit, because basically I thought, well, you know, this is what you do. It just didn't work. One of the, the, the great albums that you guys produced, Die of the Hurricane, and the recording of it, um, I mean, it, it produced such great music, but there, there seemed to be some tension in making that album. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, I actually tried to kill Dave, actually. Really? Yeah, I did, actually. How come? Um, I, I, I spent all night doing a mix. And I said, do you want to hear the mix? And he goes, no. And I was a bit tired. And I, so I picked up the snooker table, basically, all balls off it, and tried to kill him with it. Really? Yeah. I, I just thought, you absolute ungrateful bastard. Speaking of Dave, any idea of what he's doing these days? Oh, gosh, yeah. I know he lives back in Manchester. Hmm. Last thing I heard, he was playing some solo shows. Whether he still is, I don't, I, I don't really know. We haven't been in contact for quite some time. Okay. What we'd like to do is get you in the same room. Have instruments there. God. If you're up for it, have a bit of a rehearsal. And then uh, we'll provide you with a venue to play in front of your fans. We'd love to have the privilege of, of show, showcasing the alarm once again. I'm going to be honest with you, I've got no a problem. Uh, wh whether the alarm would play together again, I, I don't know. Mm. And I, I'll be deadly honest with you, I, I'm not... I, do, I don't know. I'd love to get back in rooms with everybody and just have a fight, because we never fought originally. If you would just do me the honour of giving me your autograph, Basis check. Eddie McDonald is in, but the hardest work is yet to come. Eddie directed us to Manchester, where guitarist Dave Sharp is touring as a solo artist. So we hopped on the first northbound train to find him. All right, Dave is sitting at the bar. He's the bar at the bar. Yeah. Okay, no, us. we're coming in. Okay. Dave Sharp. 
Hey, Dave. Hey, what's going on, bro? How are you? Sir? What's going on? Not much. My name is Amir. I'm Amir. 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 Yeah. VH1. Uh, these are my friends. <laughs> Welcome to the boat. Welcome to the big hand. It's good to be here. VH1 and your fans have uh, elected the alarm. They want to know where the members of the alarm are. So uh, I am scouring the earth and I've come to Manchester to find you, my friend. Welcome to the It's good to be here. It's good to be here. Now, I have a, an all important question, my friend. Part of the program is to reunite you with your bandmates, to get you in the same room, to hang out, to tell tales. I've been trying to do that for years. Well, you don't know, Chance. Uh, allow us the privilege and the honor of doing that. I'll go for it. You'll go for it? I'll go for all right, he's in. He's in. Yeah. Hey, Sharp, everybody. Hey. To seal the deal, if you would do me uh, the further honor of an autograph. Okay, fine. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. No problem. Good you. Cheers. 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 He was always the rock star. He was always the one that should have been a rock star. Uh, tell me about how your music was created. How did you guys uh, sit down and write your songs? Um, it developed in, in a lot of different ways, you know. Um, Mike and Ed would bring loads of songs in. I'd bring some songs in. There's no strict creative process. It just happens. It's sort of it, it comes from the soul, man. Sure. And whatever the situation is, that's what that's how it's gonna be. How did you start to measure your success? For me, the success of the band was measured in terms of the music and, and how powerful um, the music was coming back at, out of the speakers and what road. people were saying about it. What else do you remember from your days on the road? Around about 1986, it was always like, get in, make an album and get back on the road, you know. Um, and so you'd really not had a chance to really evolve and bring in the experiences from the road to the studio to grow the band in the studio what was it like on the road we were hotter than ever on the road the band was a masterful wonder wondrous rock band in full flight to coin a phrase everybody knew it you know we knew it the audience knew it everybody knew it you can't you couldn't take on the alarm at that point but why is it a band that is, was as hot and as, and as big as you were at that stage suddenly decide, or at least one person decided, that that was it? You know, to this day, I have no idea. I'm still as stunned as I'm talking to you here as that night, that moment where the three of us leant back. Did he say what I think he said? That's the, this is it. This is the last gig. That moment is frozen in time for me. And um, I've never really got over the shock of it yet. We're going to put the four of you in the same room and get you to hang out. You lock four, four of us in a room, and, and there's going to be some sparks flying, bro. I can yeah. tell you that for not. You're looking forward to this? Uh... I can't wait. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> He's in. I'm going to kick some butt when I get in there with the guys, you know? A few issues, you know what I mean? Hey, yeah. right, turn that thing off. <laughs> Guitarist Dave Sharp is in. Now it's on to the guy who left the band high and dry. Next, Mike Peters makes a stand on stage. This is my last moment with me alone. The cameras were rolling, and I said what I said. I'm going out in the blaze of glory. Log on to VH1.com to find out all you need to know about the bands we're reuniting. Well, three members of the alarm have agreed to reunite. Now, can we convince lead singer Mike Peters, who deserted his mates over a decade ago, to say yes? This is the Students' Union building here at Manchester University. Mike Peters is playing tonight. I'm going to try to get him before his sound check to ask him if he's willing to reunite with the alarm. Come on, come on. Friends from America to meet Mike Peters, yeah. a member of the Alarm. What I've been assigned to do by your fans and, uh, of course, VH1, is uh, to find the original members of the of the band. 
and uh, see if you're open to the idea of taking part in a reunion with the original bandmates. You never know. Well, what we want to do is uh, assemble you guys, put you in the same room, have a chat about the good old days, yeah. and then put you in front of your fans for a one night only special gig. God willing. I'm, I'm always getting there. You never say no to anything. There. So you're in? Of course I am. He's in! Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. That is awesome. Just to seal the deal for us, I would love your autograph. <laughs> Wonderful, Mike. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, I was wondering if you're open to uh, a bit of a chat with me. Yeah. Yeah? Course, yeah. We, oh, good, no good. Mike Peters is presently touring with a new incarnation of The Alarm. The Alarm, uh, living in a, one apartment in London to start out with, holding down... Uh, day jobs and playing music at night, is that a fair way to describe the early days? Yeah, the, the initial rehearsals for The Alarm took place in North Wales and as soon as we started playing songs that we, we had at that time, like um, Unsafe Building, 68 Guns, that was the song that convinced us that we should go forward and do something new. Tell me about um, Playing uh, in America, I believe it's 86, UCLA, for the MTV gig. April the 12th, 1986. Yeah. He remembers it. It's, it's, it's right in there, right? Very well. Yeah. Well, it was a, um, significant because it, we were playing this free concert in, in uh, Los Angeles at UCLA, and it's a way of us thanking our American audience for changing our lives. Why was it enough to say, as you two did, all songs written by The Alarm. I leave it at that. Because we never started together in that way. The, the Alarm was born out of a songwriting partnership between Eddie and I. When we got to make the Raw album, it, it sort of became a showcase for Dave. Nigel and Dave wanted to make the last album without me being the singer. They wanted Dave to be the lead singer. Really? How did you find that out? But they told me. The compromise was he got to sing the songs he wrote. And, um, and, and when we made the record, but it wasn't what I wanted it to be. It, it became a bit of a compromise. Uh, when we went out on tour, um, it was quite a few months after the record had been made, and Dave had since gone on and made a solo record of his own. It, Dave had, was negotiating, wanted the, his solo album to come out before the final show. I'd arranged for us all to meet the day after the show, and so we could resolve our differences and uh, find a time to work again. But on the day of the show, Dave um, cancelled the meeting. So it was the first time in the history of the band that someone put their own needs before the group's needs. The cameras were rolling, and I said what I said, and he left the band. I left, and, you know, I thought if Dave wants to be the lead singer and have all the responsibility of keeping the unit together, then he can have it. Did you decide that on stage or was it moments before or in the after you all of these things had had come to your attention i made the decision in the afternoon when i found out the day wasn't going to be at the meeting the next day and i thought well i still didn't know if i could have the balls to do it on stage because i was terrified tonight this is my last moment with me alone it's funny how they shoot you down when your hands are held up high and you open up your eyes what prevented you from telling the band of your decision before you announced it to the world? Uh, there was no time, and we weren't speaking to each other. But at least I thought, well, the cameras are rolling. I'll tell the cameras, and every alarm fan in the world can see that film, and they can judge and see it for themselves. We'd known each other all our lives, and I felt really bad for them. But at the time, I was only thinking of myself, really. To be honest, I thought, well, if I leave, they can get on with being the alarm. I it wasn't taking anyone's living away from me. I wasn't firing anybody. Mm. I was committing commercial and career suicide. I was leaving what I was. I was Mike Peters of the alarm. I still am. But the only way I could find my sanity and find myself again was to actually walk away from it. And, and I left them the name The Alarm, and they had 10 years to do what they wanted with it, to re go out, find another guy to write the songs, sing for them, or just play guitar and let Dave be the lead singer. Mm. And um, nothing happened. But for all of us, the four of us, to get into a room together has not happened since June the 30th, 1991. So it will be a nice family reunion. I can't wait to give them all a hug and a kiss. Well, thank you. We did it! We convinced all four original members of The Alarm to reunite. 
Next, 68 hugs as the lads reconvene. Good lord, look at this. No shelf. We're gonna have a hug then. I think we're gonna, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when the hugging stops, Mike has some explaining to do. Well, yeah, what's in it? What's in it? Well, I had no plan to make an announcement at Brixton. I hate you do this hard plan. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you sort of have to plan that, you know. We've reunited the alarm for the first time in over 10 years. What happens now is up to them. Hello, Dave. Hey, old man. How you doing? Hi, sir. Right, yeah. Good to Fine. see you. Welcome. Riding up front. <laughs> I'm riding the trunk, dude. There we go. You get the, the guitar gets the star treatment. Oh, right? yeah, that's me, yeah. We've been known to have our ups and downs, and uh, like I say, we're just going to have to wait and see, see what, what fireworks start to fly. I'm looking forward to the whole thing. Eddie <laughs> McDonald. How are Thank you, time, sir? sir. I'm fine and dandy. Good to see you again. Good to see you. I think I'm nervous the fact that, you know, you haven't done something for like quite a long period of 13 years, and then you just go straight back into it. It'll be a good test. So I am nervous, but I'm also really excited, so it could be, it could be great. Good Lord, look at this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, f no shelf! <laughs> 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 you're thinking, I was going, oh, you've got a short hair. You're blonde. You look great, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. You looking forward to it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I it's can't gonna, really believe it. It's going to be great, isn't it? Mm. All the way from San Francisco, California, Nigel Twist. How are you? I'm going to be most excited about getting on stage and playing with them again because, after all, at the end of the day, it's the music that, you know, brought us all together and carried us along for, you know, 12, 13 years, and hopefully that's what will keep us going tonight. Exactly with money. It's the Folksman! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Top boat! <laughs> oh, I love it! Super! <laughs> <laughs> Top bloke. <laughs> sharp, dude, looking sharp. Oh, as always. Where's, where's the spiky-haired one? Is he, uh, do it? Here? Mike Peters, how are you, yeah, sir? Good you to doing? see you. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, a lot of things that were unsaid when, when we parted, so it's a chance for us to put those behind us properly. I'm looking forward to that, getting back to those kind of instinctive things that, that you get when brothers play together, because that's how I've always seen us as being brothers. Need a break, Ladies and gentlemen. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you, mate. We're gonna have a hug then. I think we're gonna, yeah. Hey, gentlemen. All right, mate. What are your thoughts now that you've had some time together? Not much, but some time together in the same room. How the hell did we agree? I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it was emotional just having that little band hug on the stage. It was just something we used yeah. to before we went on stage. Yeah. And just to have that moment again. It, was it's special. June 30th, 1991. What happened then? Mike has left the planet. Yeah. You, you, you should have snuck around to see what the three of us could have done. That's what you did, mate. Well, then, Mike, time. Well, yeah, <laughs> what did happen? <laughs> what did happen? <laughs> uh, even though I had no plan to make an announcement at Brixton, but it happened on the night when David blew out the meeting the next morning because he was flying off to America. Yeah, it surprised me that Mike said that. He wasn't really planning it, you know, especially because he actually left the stage and drove off, you know? <laughs> it's like, you sort of have to plan that, you know? I thought Dave was actually going to leave the band before oh. me. Oh. But, <laughs> <and> <laughs> it, <laughs> well, we were on stage and you were announcing God Save Somebody. Well, as far as I was concerned, brother, I mean, I was I in break mode, you know? Yeah, you, of it course was, you were, yeah. Like, you know, we were going to take a break, so yeah. i got to keep working, dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I, Dave, I understand I'm that. I'm going to rock on, man. So did I. But it was, you know, I think, to be honest, I, I, you know Dave what? had a legal team working on his solo record and all that kind of stuff. And, and we, that we didn't know about, and you know, our agent was flying out to the German tour, and he was saying, you know, Dave's booking his tour, and do you know anything about it? 
when I brought it up when we had our chat in Manchester, you said it's as shocking to you today or when we had that well, chat. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the minute that Mike walked off the stage, I mean, the, the three of us are just totally freaked because we had no idea no, what no, was going to happen. I, I obviously, that's the kind of real, you know, it's going to whack anybody. Out. Right. And so, you know, we didn't know nothing was going to happen. So when it happened, yeah, it's a big shock. Looking back, I hated it at the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but the funny thing about it is so many groups you hear break it through lawyers and through phone calls and it's mm. like at least it's what we, we finished on stage we were on fire that was it yeah right. exactly. and, uh, oh, man. you know and uh, except was... for the bit at the end <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know we, we wrote the song going out in a blaze of glory together and, and that was it seemed to me a fitting way well i'll tell you what man let's get out there and finish the job tonight let's do it, yeah. 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 Absolutely. When we all get together, Nigel, Eddie, myself and Dave, there is that family bond and that no one can ever take that away from us. Not, we can't even take it away from ourselves. That's how strong it is. <laughs> so what are we going to play? Rock show! Let's go! Rock show! Come on! Rock show! Top. One, one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's A in the mid when the chorus is going double. It's always the, it's the A. That's it. One, three, four. We're talking like mid forties now, and and you know, being the drummer is probably the most. Um, you have to have the most stamina, you know, because you have to keep up that pace, you know, for a long period of time. Cut it down by about like 16 You get a break, you see. If you do the middle eight, you get a break in it when it goes bam, bam, bam. Oh, yeah, bam, yeah. Bam, yeah. You get a breathe in. Just go quiet for a second, yeah. It was just the spontaneity of the whole thing. Every time uh, there's been an opportunity to get together again, um, there's always been something in the way. He goes to an A, where we go to Yeah, can I just... I'm just hoping that the, the light switch goes on in my head and I just go, bang, here we are, back. It's only playing with your eyes closed. Because if you think about it too much, I think it's probably... You know, it's probably quite hard, I think. Everyone's come into it from where they are right now as adults, and, and that which is the way it should be. We can't go back and recreate 1983 alarm or 1991 alarm. What you're seeing is the four guys together, and this is the sound that the alarm makes in 2004. <laughs> Years after his Brixton bombshell, Mike Peters gets a shot at redemption. And I have a chance to pull a few things right. The alarm sounds again. The thing what's going to top it off for me is seeing all the old faces in the audience again. Whatever happens, I won't forget it. When Bands Reunited continues. It's showtime for the freshly reunited members of The Alarm. More than 10 years have passed since their last gig, and we know how that one ended. What surprises await tonight? Mike and Dave are interesting dynamic. Obviously, they're both professionals, but obviously, you know, you know they're still feeling each other out. It's really good to see them, to be honest with you. And I think it's, there's no politics, it's just purely about music. Great just playing with everybody again and uh, playing the old songs again and... And then to see all the fans, you know, lining up outside is uh, really special because that's what the band was all about. Yeah, about five hours to get here, I think, actually, yeah. All the way from Holland. Just to see the alarm? Just to see this show tonight. Yes. To, to have four friends come back like that after, after ten years being away, it's really good. It's given, it's given me a real good measure of time and, and um, seeing how life kind of moves on. Am I nervous about the show tonight? Uh, a little bit, yeah, because it's um, it's a, it, there's a, the element of the unknown about it because we haven't played together for such a long time, and uh, I'm, I think I'm more nervous for the other guys than myself because I can see Dave, um, he's getting into it, 
and he's but he's getting more and more um, wound up as the show goes on. I can see because we forget the alarm wasn't just about the four guys; it was about a set of songs and an audience that stayed with it all the way. And they have a part to play in this show tonight. They said it wouldn't happen. The original members of the alarm would not get on stage again. Well, my friends, it's going to happen here in London. The alarm on stage once again. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight the alarm is a. Before we start, I'd just like to say, I love these guys. again after all this time just incredible really uplifting experience i was right at the front it's just like it was 20 years ago i was there on uh, in june at brixton academy back in 91 and they were they're still top draw there's moments in there tonight that 
you know, you just immediately just go back to another, another time, a, a fantastic moment in time. Whatever happens, I won't forget it. Well, the last time uh, I was on a microphone with these guys, they didn't know what I was going to say. Tonight, this is my last moment with my alarm. I'm going out in a blaze of glory. Tonight is a chance to put a few things right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Peters is still here. We hope for the rest of the time. This is called Going Out in a Blaze of Glory. My hands are held up high. It's funny how they shoot you down when your hands are held up high and you open up your heart and soul. It was great tonight, you know, to have him back on stage and, you know, I got a little dig and I've had it, so that's okay. If you've got something to say, I had a fantastic time. It was absolutely amazing. I was pleased for the for Nigel and Dave and Eddie to have uh, that sort of moment again in their lives. You know, it was nice for the fans to see them and shout their name again. And I was, I was, it was more about them than me tonight. And I thought I was really pleased. I'm proud of them, and they did great. You know, the way we were tonight, there was um, there was much more love and understanding that there ever, than there ever was um, in the past. So um, I, I'm really glad it happened, and, and you know, it was great, man.